Hi parents, it's Miss Martelon. Um, I hope that you are all doing well and staying healthy from the entire first grade team. We just thank you for all of your support and understanding during this time. It is a learning experience for all of us. Um, so we just want to thank you for your understanding and support. It means so much to us and we appreciate all that you're doing. So I know that across the entire first grade team, we've gotten some feedback that some of our students are really struggling a little bit with completing their writing at home. So we thought one of the best things to do would be kind to, to give you some tips and tools of how to kind of motivate your child and help them with their writing because it is sometimes a difficult thing to do. So I promise I'm going to keep it nice and short and to the point. Um, and try, I'm gonna to try to explain everything as best as possible. So we're gonna start out with some tips for motivating your child to write. So one of the things that um, we came up with is creating a writing space for them. And this gives your child the freedom to pick where they want to write. Um, but the only thing is that I know in my classroom, when they choose where they're writing, we always say it has to be a space where they're going to be safe and successful. And this is the language that I use with my students so they understand that you are picking a spot where you are going to be successful and it has to be safe. Um, and then in this, uh, the in their writing space, they should have access to all of the writing resources that they may need as they're, while they're writing. Um, you know, and you should, you can keep them in a folder um, that can travel with them from space to space that they're going to be using a different writing space each day. Some of them might want the same writing space. So just make sure you have a writing folder accessible for them um, to really keep the resources in there. And we'll discuss what resources I'm talking about a little bit later. Now, one of the next things we thought would be a great idea is to kind of give them a writing audience. I know it's hard sometimes because we're not there every day and they aren't able to share their writing with us each day face-to-face -face or through the computer. Um, but this can kind of help them, you know, have a feel a sense of account accountability and ownership for their writing. If you maybe tell them that they're going to share their writing with someone special when they're finished. It's even just FaceTiming a family member, going on Zoom with a friend and just sharing that writing. Um, I think that that, we think that that would be a great way to motivate them to you know, get their best work done and really kind of just share their writing, share all of their hard work that they're doing because they are all working so, so hard. Another thing that I don't have in the slideshow, but you can also talk about goals with your child. Um, have them set a writing goal each day. You know, some of the students may and their writing goals are going to look different. Some of the students may have a goal of writing two pages a day, where some students may only have a goal of writing one page a day, and that's okay. They all have different writing abilities, and it's, it's okay. Um, but your goal could also not even be just how much you're going to write or maybe what you're going to write. If they haven't wrote a satisfying ending yet, maybe that's their goal for the day. Your goal is to add a satisfying ending. So, you know, just giving them something to work towards. And then as soon as they hit that goal, celebrate them. You know, give them that positive feedback. I noticed that you made your goal today. That's awesome. Now let's go do a brain break. Um, you know, just giving them goals to work towards. Now I'm going to give you some ideas of how to support your child as they're writing. Um, I'm first going to tell you some of the expectations for writing that we have. So as the students are writing, they are going to come across words that they do not know how to write. And it's normal, it's okay. But they should try to spell those tricky words as best they can independently using the resources that we are going to talk about. Um, this is something that really teaches them how to use the phonics skills that they have learned and all of their background knowledge to spell these difficult words. And it's really going to, you know, grow that brain of theirs. Um, and students should also write about their own ideas. So they should be coming up with ideas. You may help them and 
talk about it, ask them questions, but they should be coming up with their own ideas. Um, and they should also be, like I said before, utilizing all of the resources that they have available during writing. You know, if it's rewatching Miss Pillion's videos or pulling up some of the posters that Miss Pillion and we all attach to our um, writing lessons, then that's fine. If they need that, then it's something they need and they can utilize that. Um, students should also, in their writing, spell their snap words correctly. And that is something that we will also give you another resource um, that they can use to, you know, to uh, do that. So let's move into helping your student, your child, <laughs> plan their writing. Now, this is something that you should be doing before they start writing. Um, I know it's difficult because you all have jobs as well, and we understand, but we're just giving you ideas how you can help. Um, so one of the things to start with is help them imagine the parts of their writing. You know, you can sit with them and talk about the writing that they are going to write before they start. Because them being able to sit down and rehearse it out loud will help them, help them write it that much better. Um, so just talking with them and having them tell you the story they're going to write out loud so they can kind of think about it and get their brain working. And then once they have that idea and they've talked about it with you out loud, they can go ahead and just sketch their ideas across the page, which just means they can sketch the pictures and then go back and start their writing. This way they know the parts of their writing and they're already on the paper, quickly sketched, and they can start writing um, and they won't forget those parts. Now, when you're talking with your child and planning their writing, don't prompt or tell them what to write, but instead we want to ask them questions, figure out more about their writing. So you can say things like, what is the first thing that happened in your story? And then they might tell you and you might say, oh, so what happened next? Or, oh my goodness, did your character get into some trouble? So asking those open-ended questions so they are able to come up with their writing and get their brain thinking about, okay, well, Hmm, what did happen next? What do I want to write? Um, so open-ended questions when they're planning their writing is such a huge thing to really get their brain working and thinking about what they are going to write. Now we're going to move into our last topic and that's just resources for spelling. Now I mentioned that in their writing all their snap words should be spelled correctly and we have something in our classrooms, we all have a word wall. We're on the word wall. All of our snap words are listed. Um, you obviously do not have that at home. So we are going to send you, um, your teacher will send you, I'm not sure, via email or post it on the Google Classroom, um, but they will share it with you. It's actually a word wall. I'm sorry, you can't see it any better, but it goes through and it lists all of the letters A through Z and it has all of the snap words they should know and should know how to spell listed here. So if your student, if your child is getting stuck on a word and they're saying that they don't know how to spell it, but you notice that it's a snap word, we can say, wait a second, let's go back and look at our word wall. And then they are, can take this out and you can say, okay, what letter does it start with? For example, if the word is best, they could say, b b ooh. It starts with a B. So let's go to the B column and look for the word that best would look like best. And then they can find that word and copy it down into their writing. Um, the repetition with them being exposed to the, the correct spelling of their snap words will help them be able to spell it in their writing independently. The next thing we are going to talk about is how your child can spell tricky words and some of the things that we can do to help them. Um, it is something that we would like them to do independently, not to in independently spell the tricky word correctly, but just to independently try their best and use all of the resources they have available to spell that tricky word. Um, one of the first things I'm actually going to start with, you know, it says blends and diagraphs, so I'm going to start with the vowel chart. The vowel chart just lists all of the vowels 
and it has pictures on both sides. So the child knows A, when it is long, it says A like acorn, or A when it's short, it says A like apple. And this is something they can pull out and, and use as they are trying to spell those tricky words. Um, so this is another resource that will be available to you. Next, we have our blends and digraphs chart. Now this has, this lists the most common blends and digraphs. And this is something your child can also use if they are having trouble coming up with blends and digraphs in their tricky words. Um, again, it has a picture for each blend and digraph, and that really helps them hear the sound. So if they sometimes confuse GR and they can't really hear that grr is actually a blend and it's GR, they can pull this out and say the sound grr, grr, find the picture, grapes, and then they know, okay, grr is G-R, just like the word grape. Now the last resource we have is the ways to spell words chart. Now this chart lists all different types of ways and strategies that your child can use in order to help them spell tricky words. There are six different strategies and they all tell ways that your child can use to help spell the tricky words. Um, say it, slide it, hear it, write it. So that means they say the word cat, slide it, cat, hear it one more time, cat, and then they write it, write it on their paper. Um, using snap words is just, again, we can use the word wall and make sure our snap words are spelled correctly. Um, we can listen for little words inside, like the word winter, w in -ter. Ooh, we hear that word in, inside winter, so we know that somewhere in winter, the word in has to be there. Um, using words you know. They use the example of using art to, sm to spell smart, because art is inside smart. So if you know how to spell art, and you also know how to spell smart. So just making those connections between the things they already know and the things that they're trying to figure out and learn. Um, also writing it part by part, just I know we call it kind of karate, karate chopping the words apart. Um, if they're, the example is crocodile. So they start and they spell it kr, then kr, ok, then kr, ok, o, Kr, ok, o, d, then crock, o, d, aisle. And they really chop it up and break it into parts to help them better hear every single part that goes into that tricky word. And the last one is listen for syllables. They can write the sounds after they listen to syllables. Um, we have all learned, children have all learned that every single word has a vowel in it. There are no words that do not have any vowels. Um, so they know that they can clap the syllables. For example, if the word is smart, you can say smart. You say, okay, it has one syllable. So that means it has at least one vowel. So that's another strategy that they can use. And again, all of these strategies will may, be made available to you however your uh, child's teacher decides to. Um, I hope this helps you all a little bit understand how to better help your child. Um, if you have any questions or concerns, please reach out to your teacher. We are here to help you and support you and we want the best for your child. Um, again, thank you all for being so supportive and understanding throughout this entire thing. Um, and we really, really appreciate it. Make sure you stay safe and healthy, and hopefully we will all be back at Lakeview soon. Bye, everyone.